everything is a threat. Everything's built up. There are, you go after one shooter and there are 12 others that are behind the corner. It's about taking us out. That's, that's what they're there to do. Hamas has no respect for humanity. And that was uh, our guest last hour. Former Army soldier David Bellavia last hour on the realities of the battle with Hamas and what's to come. Now to someone uh, with his own insight in the landscape of war, General Lawrence Nicholson, retired three-star general who previously served in Gaza and Fallujah as well. He's with us now. And General, good morning to you. Uh, it's been 30 years since you did time in Gaza. I imagine the area has changed quite a bit. Uh, you were also in Fallujah in July of 2004 when you first arrived there. Do you think if, if there is an agreement that's arrived at between the Israelis, the Americans, and the Egyptians, that, that, that southern gate of Rafa, if you allow, alleviate some of the pressure among the citizens who you can confirm are citizens with no association to Hamas terrorists, how would that change the picture in Gaza? Bill, it would change it dramatically. I, I think, uh, you know, one of the advantages, I think, and, and Fallujah was a hell of a tough fight, but one of the advantages we had is that a city of 400,000 was down to about 40,000 by the time we crossed the line of departure, uh, by the time the Marines went in in November of, uh, of 2004. Um, you know, what was left in the city were the elderly, the infirmed who had nowhere to go and no one to help them, and, and the enemy, and the enemy moving around broadly through the city. I, I think you think about the, the challenge of Gaza with 2.2 million people, uh, again, one of the most densely populated uh, areas in, in the world, and bringing that force in and going through what is the hardest. All warfare is hard. Nothing is harder, grittier, dirtier than house to house, room to room, block by block fighting. So I think uh, alleviating some of that pressure to get civilians out through the Rafa gate, which, which I spent a lot of time at, uh, I think would be uh, would, would be in the best interest of all sides. Okay, so l let's say that's accomplished, and we'll say that's accomplished to a degree, right? I mean, you're trying to sift through 2.3 million people. Not easy. With regard to your experience in Fallujah, I I is that a fair comparison with the tunnels of Gaza? Because we talked with a soldier last hour. He, he was in Fallujah. He, he said everyone in Fallujah was an enemy combatant. That's not the case here. You got men and women and children who might have nothing to do with Maz, uh, Hamas terrorists. Yeah, I, absolutely. Sorting out, and, and again, the advantage the enemy has is the defender has, has the majority of, of advantages in uh, military operations, urban terrain or out. He is prepared to ground. He's, he's fighting on interior lines. He understands uh, the neighborhood. He understands where he can uh, store his supplies. The tunnel system in, uh, in, in Gaza is, is uh, supposedly, uh, you know, very, very complex uh, and very, very well uh, built. There, were, there, were sewer, there was a sewer system in, uh, in Fallujah for sure, but I think nothing rivals the complexity of the subterranean tunnels that, uh, that are in, in uh, Gaza at this time. Yeah, last question here, sir. Do you, know, do, do you think the Israelis know where these hostages are right now? Bill, I would be purely speculating like, like any of us. Uh, I, I would have to, you know, you, you have to believe that the hostages are spread out over, over the entire area, uh, that, that, that they are not, uh, you know, not being held together. So my, my sense is the Israelis may well know, based on the intelligence, where some are. But I, I think you're, you're talking about more than 100, 150 hostages. Uh, the, the chances that anybody knows where all of them are I think would be uh, would be quite slim. General, thank you for your time. We'll hold out hope.